Welcome back everyone. It is Ryan with Sticker Status here today, back again with another educational tutorial. And today we're gonna to be showing you how to turn anything into a sticker. And I'm gonna show you how to make a few different types of stickers. First, I'm gonna show you how to make simple text, single color stickers. Then I'm also gonna show you guys how to make die cut stickers with custom cut lines such as these or something like this. And then I'm also gonna show you how to take a picture such as this picture here of my Runty and we're gonna turn them into a sticker that looks like this. So a few different types of stickers here today. Um, we're gonna walk you through all of this so you can either do this on your own and send us the files to print or if you've got your own printer or cutter at home you can go ahead and make these stickers on your own so let's hop right into it first and foremost we have one of the most basic and simplest types of stickers which is just going to be your single color cut vinyl sticker such as this now you can use these for water bottles for windows um, we do a lot of businesses where we use this type of sticker for hours on their office windows or people always want their Instagram tags stuff like that so in order to do that I am using Adobe Illustrator here now Adobe Illustrator is a vector vector based program and if you don't know what a vector is a vector graphic is basically um, you know let me show you the difference here this is what we would call a raster image or just like a PNG or a JPEG so if I zoom into this picture here you can see we start to see individual pixels here right this is what they call pixelation now the difference is in a vector logo we don't get pixelation because of the way that vectors work so here you can see no matter how far you zoom in you've got straight lines all the way across and the reason for this is PNG or raster images like the one of runt down here they are made out of individual pixels of color, like the way that cameras take pictures versus a vector graphic actually uses mathematical formulas to tell the program to create a smooth line from point A to point B. So vector images can be scaled larger without losing quality. Meanwhile, PNG images, if I was to print this picture of Runt super huge, you would start to see those little pixels popping up. But I could print these vector logos as big as possible and it won't lose any quality. A lot of times when you're doing business with people, you might hear them ask for your vector logo and I will make a future video on that showing you how to turn something into a vector if it's not already um, but an easy way to tell is you can see that this has a whole box around it because it's a PNG these have uh, blue highlights around the actual line itself because it is a vector image so that's just a quick overview on kind of how Adobe Illustrator works as far as vector images goes so this first type of sticker I'm gonna go ahead and use my text typing tool over here on the left I'm gonna click and I can go ahead and type let's go test sticker like that right and you guys will notice down here at the bottom of the screen you can actually see these little uh, hotkeys popping up to show you what buttons I'm actually clicking on my keyboard that way you guys can follow along with my shortcuts and such so uh, here we have test sticker and one thing you're gonna notice right off the bat is it's still in text format right so this is still editable text so if I was to send this to the plotter it's not gonna quite cut it yet because you need to outline this so the plotter actually knows where to cut so the way to do that you're gonna select your text and then you're gonna go up to type and select create outlines or the shortcut for that is Control shift o and now you can see you actually have a blue highlight around all of your letters which will actually tell the plotter where to cut so now what you can do is you can go over here to your size tools and right now as you can see up here I'm actually displaying my uh, file format in pixels and I actually want to be working in inches centimeters wherever you're at um, I'm in inches here in the US so now I have options to change the actual size in inches so I can go with I can say if they wanted a 10 inch sticker boom it's gonna be 10 by almost an inch and you know that's a nice and simple easy way to do that again so up top here this is the Instagram vector logo and then I just typed our Instagram handle and boom you have a sticker ready to go you can send it to your plotter pick a different type of vinyl color and make it nice and easy now if we had multiple colors inside of a vector text that you wanted to create into a sticker like this there's two ways that you can do that one if you don't have a printer is you could load up the white and cut it first and then load up the red and you can apply it as a two-piece sticker now obviously that takes a little bit of time to line everything up so another way you can do it is make it a printed sticker Sticker, such as the one down here uh, which we will get to in just a second so really simple to do that whether it's text logos or anything like that like this for example this is a company that we do lots of stickers for and all of their trucks have this on the side you can actually see it right here this is what all their trucks look like just like that and so something like that where it's a single color logo again you just pull the logo in make sure it's vectorized and it is good to cut after you scale it alrighty so now I'm gonna show you guys how to create these custom shaped die cut stickers out of a vector logos such as these so right now you you can see there's no background and it would be kind of a hard sticker you could do a sticker like this uh, on the printer where you know each of these is different pieces and it would have masking over it so you can apply it all as one piece as you can see here but a lot of times if customers are ordering mass stickers it's a lot easier for them to just put something like this around it so it's just a one piece sticker you know these are really great for handouts and things like that we take these to trade shows we also have a lot of customers that order these and put them in like with all their orders or they sell them you know a three inch sticker like this can sell depending on where you're at anywhere from like two to five 
$5. So a lot of companies like little coffee shops, things like that, they'll order stickers of their logo like these and give them away or sell them. So what we have here is two different vector logos. And what I'm going to do is I need to create this white outline around the path. So this one's super simple because if you wanted to just do a plain circle background, I'm just using my ellipse tool over here and I'm holding down shift control to keep it square and add a background to it. Now this white circle's on top, but there is a keyboard shortcut. You can do control shift right facing bracket and it will move it down below. I've actually adjusted my own custom hotkey. So mine's just control one, boom. And it's gonna go behind there. You can center it up and now that's good to go as a sticker. Now, if you were printing these on your own, you would need to add a cut line, um, you know, and we can do that too. If you guys are ordering stickers from our website, we actually make it super easy to order stickers from our website. Now, if you don't have your own printer and you get your cut files ready to go, you can send in your logo like this to us at stickerstatus.store. We make it super simple to order custom stickers. You can click on circle stickers, then you upload your file right here and uh, choose how many you want and what size, and we can print them for you so we can make nice, clean looking stickers such as these. Um, but, uh, or if you have your own printer at home, you can do it on your own. But, so that's how you would do that there. So there's a circle sticker. Now, let me show you how to do this one over here where it's got more of a kind of custom line to it. And, you know, this is all gonna be up to the customer on their preference, how they want their sticker to look. You know, these circle ones are nice and easy, real durable. These ones just look a little bit more elegant because it kind of follows the shape of the logo a little bit more. That being said, you know, it's a little bit harder for the plotter to cut out and things like that. But, um, so the way to do that is I've got the logo here again. And instead of just making a circle, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna control C, copy it, and then control B to paste in place, move it over to the side. Now what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to merge under the Pathfinder tab here. And if you don't see your Pathfinder tab, make sure to go to Windows, find Pathfinder and make sure that it is selected and then it should pop up like that. So what I'm going to want to do now is merge this whole background or unite, excuse me, is the button. Click unite and then I'm going to change it to white. Now what we need to do is offset the path or give it this bleed where it sticks out a little bit further from the sticker. Because if I move it over now, you can see that it's just the same exact shape. So what we're going to want to do is select your shape, go to object, path, offset path. This menu here is going to pop up and you're going to have a few different options on how you want to do it. So you can choose the size of the offset. So you can go down to like 0.1 and hit preview. See, it just adds a little bit. So if I want like 0.5, that'll kind of give it that big sticker shape there. Now you do have options here where you have meter or miter, which is going to give it these sharp square looking edges, which doesn't look very clean. I typically always tend to go round. As you can see, it really cleans up those edges there. So now I'm going to hit OK. Now I have all these different white pieces. What I'm going to want to do is select them all unite them once again. So now I have a single solid shape. Now I do notice I still have this showing through. Um, so I do want to delete that. So what you can do is double click on the edge of the path backspace to delete it. So now I can scoot this back over and boom. Now we have a custom shaped die cut sticker ready to print. Again, if you're printing on your own, you might need to add cut lines, but other than that, it is ready to go. Same thing with this monkey here. Um, same thing. You would go control C, control B, move it over, unite it, expand it, unite it once again get rid of this extra circle here turn it to white or whatever color you want for the background you could do a black background you could do whatever you could do you know things like that white anything like that okay so now there you go there are those custom die cut shape stickers now, like I showed you guys earlier, if you wanted to turn a multicolored logo such as this one into a uh, die cut sticker like that, same thing, boom, move it to the side. What I'm going to do is turn it to white, expand it, boom, unite it. And then sometimes when you have a bunch of holes in a piece like this, what you can do is click the whole thing, release compound path, unite everything back together. And now you have a single piece that you can scoot over and boom, there's a nice looking multicolored die cut logo sticker. So there we go. We have uh, examples of a few different types of die cut stickers that you can make with vector logos. Now, the last type of sticker I'm going to show you how to make is a sticker out of an actual picture. So again, here I've got this picture of my dog Runt. And what we've done is cut out the background and added a little bit of white border to it to make it a nice, clean, cute looking sticker. Now, uh, obviously you could just use this square as a sticker. But if this was just the sticker, it's not going to look as clean as the one on the right does. You know, you could now you can do something like this where you put a background behind it and make it a nice little square sticker. But again, all this background stuff, you can see my banjo and my saxophone. We don't need all that. Um, so uh, I'm going to show you how to make it a lot cleaner, such as this. So in this case, I'm actually going to have to use Adobe uh, Photoshop to get rid of the background. You can do that in Illustrator. You could technically go through and like draw the mask and clip it all out, which is going to take a lot more time on Illustrator and not look as clean as if you went into Photoshop. 
Photoshop, you know, you could go around, draw your path, clip them out and do all that. You know what I mean? Such as so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Photoshop and here we've got this picture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the picture. And then if you're up to date on the newest version of Photoshop, you can actually have, they actually have this tool called select subject down here. That's pretty handy. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And as you can see, it did a pretty good job of selecting our subject here. It did miss a few of his like claws down there. Some of the fine details, it missed his tail. And then it selected some of this that we don't need. Um, but what I like to do is once it's got that, I'm going to go ahead and use my quick selection tool again up here, right here. And I'm going to select the things that it missed, right? So I'm going to add in his claws there. And it's okay if I get a little bit of the carpet because we're actually going to go through and erase that later. Um, so a little piece of his foot there. I don't need all that. And again, I'm just clicking and dragging to select more stuff. And then you hold down Alt and click to deselect stuff. So if I didn't want to select this part, hold down Alt and see it's unselecting that stuff. But again, what we want to do is go through and add these pieces that it missed. So let's get his claws down here claws down here and then his tail that it missed we'll go ahead and select his tail and then we want to deselect this object over here we don't need that so I'm holding down alt subtract all that and now it looks like we've got most of him so what I'm gonna do now is hit control J which is gonna isolate that layer. So now I've got two layers over here. I'm gonna hide the first one and it's gonna hide what we were looking at. And now we've just got him clipped out here. And as you can see, the edges are a little bit rough because again, we selected, because again, we over selected. But now what we can do is we can use our eraser tool by clicking E and you can go through and you can kind of clean this image up. Erase the carpet that we don't need in the background and kind of clean some of these edges up to make it a better looking sticker. So let me do that real quick. Okay, so there we go. Now we've got them all clipped out to where it's just him. So we went from something like this to that. And now what I'm gonna wanna do is hide the background so it's literally just a transparent PNG. So now what I can do is export this as a PNG and then import it into Illustrator. So we'll hop back over to Illustrator now. File, place, and then you find your file place it in there. Okay, so now we've just got a transparent PNG. Again, this is a raster image. It's not vector because you can see all these individual pixels. Now, one thing I will mention is Adobe Illustrator does have a vectorizing feature in it. So what I can do is I could click this and I can go image trace down here under quick actions. And then they have a few different options of vectorization in here. So if I go like low fidelity photo, it might take a little quick second, depending on how fast your computer is, but it's going to go ahead and vectorize this image. Boom. And that's what it's going to spit us out. So now you can see that if I zoom in, you don't see pixels, but it's created all these weird different shapes and things. And sometimes style wise, people might like this type of sticker, right? That still looks good. That's a vectorized version of that. Now this is a vector photo, but as you can see, we lose a lot of detail when you vectorize things like that. So the way that I'm going to avoid that so I can still see his teeth and things like that, because this was a high res photo, right? So a lot of photos are usable for things like this because you know it's a high enough resolution photo and just make sure if you have a blurry logo or a blurry photo and you're producing stickers for a customer just make sure that they're aware you know let them know hey that picture wasn't quite as high quality as i would like it to be however i can still print it it just may be a little bit pixelated and if they're okay with that then you're set uh, but what i'm going to do in this case to add that border like we have over here i'm going to copy him to the side now what i'm going to choose is i'm going to go image trace and I'm going to do just six colors. Now what six colors do it will low fidelity as we did earlier had like probably 20 to 30 different colors in it. But if I just choose this six color option, it's going to make a really simple vectorized version of that photo just like that. See, even something like that looks really cool. And depending on the style that the customer's after, they might want something like that. But what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to now go down to the quick actions and hit expand, which is going to turn it into the vector pass. And then I can ungroup it. Control shift G remove the white background. Now I can take all these different shapes and I'm going to unite them. Now, if I zoom in, notice how there's all these little holes inside of it. So I'm going to release compound path and then hit unite once again, and that's going to make it all one piece. Now, again, if I slide it over, it's just the same shape as him. So what I need to do is add a little bit of an offset path to it. Boom. Make sure it's round. And again, to do that, you can go object path offset path, or I created a custom shortcut that is control Q for it. So boom, like that. Unite it all, turn it white, slide it over. 
And boom, now you have a cute little sticker of your picture, whether it's a person, whether it's a car, whether it's an animal, a place, anything like that, you can do the same process with as so. There you guys go, quick and straight to the point tutorial today on how to make these three different types of stickers. Again, we have our single color stickers here, we have our custom shaped die cut stickers here, and then we have a sticker out of an actual photo. Now again, like I said, if you have a cutter at home with some vinyl, you can actually make these on your own, which I'm gonna do tutorials on in the future, showing you how to use things like Cricut cutters at home and make your own stickers. But if you're looking to do something printed and multicolor like this, again, you can get the files ready like this. Go on over to our website and we actually have full on full color printing services here at Sticker Status. So you can send us your logos. They will come off the printer. Then they will get laminated with a nice finish, whether it's gloss or matte finish. And then we throw it into our plotter where it will cut the stickers out and ship them right to your door. And then if you guys need design help or you need help adding these cut lines or anything like that, um, we do offer custom design services on our website. Just make sure to check the box custom custom design needed and we can help you design your stickers and your logos and get them all figured out. Um, so thanks again guys for watching today. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'm going to start doing lots of tutorials on Adobe Illustrator showing you guys how to do at home projects on your own, like make stickers, you know, start doing wraps. So this is the first of many videos where I'm going to actually be showing you guys a lot of the behind the scenes um, tips and tricks on Adobe Illustrator to make your prints come to life. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Or if you have any other types of tutorials you want to see, leave those in the comments as well. So as as always, guys, if you learned anything or enjoyed the video, please make sure to like it and also subscribe to our channel to catch all of our future videos. And other than that, we'll see you next time.